So let's take a look at the molecular geometry. We're talking about the shape of CO2, carbon dioxide. And what we need is we need a valid Lewis structure to start out with so we can figure out the molecular geometry for CO2. If you need help with this, there's a link in the description on how to do the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So what we want to do is we want to count the number of things bonded to our central atom. That's the carbon. That's the one that's in the center here. So we have one oxygen here and another here. And we don't have any lone pairs on this carbon. All the electrons, they're involved in the chemical bonds. So since we have those two things bonded to the central carbon, we have a steric number of two. We don't have any lone pairs. CO2, that's going to be a linear molecule. Its molecular geometry is going to be linear. And the bond angle here, 180.0 degrees. Let's look at that in 3D. So imagine the purple here, that's that central atom, the carbon. And we're going to add an oxygen that's double bonded there. And when we add the other double bonded oxygen, watch how they push each other away. So now they're on opposite sides. These atoms here, which have their electron cloud, they're pushing each other away. So we end up with that linear molecular geometry and that bond angle of 180 degrees. Let's go back. So because we have a steric number of two and no lone pairs, it's linear. There is another way to figure this out. You could use what's called the AXE notation, sometimes AXN. A is the central atom. X, that's the number of atoms bonded. We have one, two of those. E, that's the number of lone pairs. And we don't have any lone pairs. All of these, they're in chemical bonds. So zero lone pairs. Let's just get rid of the E here. And if you look up AX2 on a table, you'll find that CO2 has a linear molecular geometry, just like we found before. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.